Okay, Uzi, so uh, could you tell us a little bit about your beginnings uh, as an entrepreneur? After you grew up, uh, when you started and uh, what did you do it and uh, how it all was planned? So, um, I saw that I didn't know that it was So basically, I, I think it all started when I was uh, around like 17 years old. And what happened is that uh, I, I stumbled upon this amazing technology uh, that was called Flash 2. Um, and uh, I used it to create a website. Um, and I, I didn't know what I was doing. I just put it out there. I was doing some electronic music back then, so I had like, people participating in the competition, but I never really understood what, what is it that I'm doing. And one day I'm watching TV and we had this, I'm from Israel originally, so we had this like uh, huge, uh, TV show about computers, um, and they're showing my website, saying that's one of like the most innovative websites with the uh, you know new and upcoming technology. And like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was pretty shocked. I was sitting there after the show for like 30 minutes trying to figure out if I imagined that or that was true. You know, being on TV back then it was like pretty pretty huge. So I said, well, maybe I'm I'm good at this. So uh, um, so I said I was into electronic music and. Um, I had I had a problem, you know. All, you know, every entrepreneur starts. I think with a problem that they have. Best if you have your own. And the thing was that I wanted to go to parties, but I didn't know what are the best parties. So uh, I came up with this notion that you have a, one uh, like an application on your taskbar on, on PC. I was a Windows user, and it's terrible. But I, you have this like uh, application on your taskbar, and it will be uh, so whenever somebody wants to publish their own party, they'll push it right to a, to a server, and this server will push the data um, uh, to, your, to, you know, to all of these kind of clients, and it will pop up and you know that there's a party today. Um, you think about like three years version of some, I don't know, maybe Twitter or something, but like, just really this idea, it was like a little widget that would jump and give you the, the, um, the idea about, you know, about the party, but the funny thing was that I had Except for doing this flash stuff, which is not really coding, as you know. Uh, I had no idea about coding, not like today. Uh -huh. uh, but I, I had no idea, it's actually I had no idea about coding, but I did know that there is a guy in my street at least who's like a genius, right? So um, he was, I said, well, I can partner with him and we can kind of create this um, uh, company that will uh, give notifications about parties, right? At 17 again. Uh, so I go and I kind of convince him and he started all kind of tries to code and kind of teaches me kind of like early stuff that I don't remember any of, but I put it out there and I go to my uh, parents. And I mentioned my father is eight years old and kind of old and uh, all, all my family are doctors, right? So uh, was, he, was he 80, 80 when you were 17 as well? Or yeah. Or 80 or 80. <laughs> but uh, no, they're kind of old school, you know, people and they're all my family, like kind of, again, family of doctors. So I go to my dad and my brother and tell them, I'm starting a company. And they started laughing. I could not stop them for like 30 minutes. <laughs> and they were right, I had no idea. I thought that you just decided to start a company and you have the notion that you have to register the company and you know, I didn't know they were company. But since then I've been kind of trying to repeat that in, in you know, try to improve this process, taking like 78 years to figure it out. <laughs> And uh, we know that you did, uh, you did a digital agency in uh, back in Israel, which, uh, um, yeah, can you tell us a little bit about, uh, about what it was and I understand uh, you sold it, which I guess is a, is a good thing and then, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so the uh, party thing didn't pick up, right? Um, it was not a huge commercial success. Um, pretty much ended this day because I got really insulted by my father and brother, nothing to me. Um, but, you know, I went to, to the army, in the army in Israel, everybody has, has to do it, but uh, I had this friend there and I was, you know, doing some more web stuff. And then I had a friend of mine coming and telling me, hey, I have this DJ that I'm trying to promote, maybe you can create a website for me. He said, okay, sounds good. Uh, so I created a website together with a friend in the army, and um, this guy gave us like uh, $800 in cash. We worked like for a couple of days. 
and you know, I was 18 and a half years older, and it sounded to me like, it's like getting a million dollars out of me. So you suddenly understand that you can make a profession out of it. So this guy who was going with me, we ended up starting this company together and building it and we had, uh, we're doing user experience and development uh, in the net unfortunately, but development. And uh, we had uh, at the peak like 30 people and it was really cool. We learned a lot, I learned a lot using, you know, working with huge banks and insurance companies in Israel, IT companies in Israel. But after seven, eight years, uh, I kind of got tired of professional services, and it was really had this itch to to kind of build a product and, and you know having clients in masses versus like paid customers. Um, so yeah, this was the transition, the decision to sell the agency. And why did you move to the US? Do you think it was um, do you think it was necessary to start a global company? Are you, are yeah, targeting the global market. I think like with many things, if you asked me that before, I'd say no, of course not. You can start a company from anywhere, uh, but now if I look back at it, I think it was, it was great, it was great for the company. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter how you want to reframe it or think about it, at the end of the day, the US is a huge market. And it's not only a huge market, it's a place where businesses can move really, really fast. Uh, there's a lot of capital there, there are a lot of uh, good people there, a lot of um, customers there, which is basically the most important things. Um, and, and it's a very place to, uh, a very good place to start a company. Uh, I personally moved there for studies, um, or I thought that I'll study. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think it was a great move, and, and I think that if not living there, so I'm seeing, I'm talking with many entrepreneurs from Israel today, so I tell them, look, even if you don't want to live there, okay, if you want to start a company, especially, even not talking about consumer internet, consumer internet especially, you've got to be there at least, I don't know, once in every two, three months for one, two weeks, meet people, see people, understand like what's going on because, you know, the pools, I feel the pools in there. Okay, so I know some of the challenges uh, your company <laughs> The company was facing uh, during uh, fundraising. Do, I think uh, I have um, I have an uh, I have a feeling that people know very little about the fundraising process and how a important it is, be very difficult and challenging it is. So if you could tell us more about it, that would be great. Yeah. So basically, with fundraising, uh, well, there are, there are seems that there are a couple of camps, right? There's this camp of like you should raise money. In this camp of you should raise money. Um, and what I urge you to do is not look for a definitive answer. Uh, you know, for each in their own situation, their own company that they're trying to build. Uh, if you're trying to build a small lifestyle company that will, you know, uh, generate five thousand dollars a month, I mean, you'll not be able to raise money anyway. But you probably also don't need to raise money. Okay. Um, for us, I think, uh, there was this point in time where we felt that we have like uh, a good traction with customers, customers who are happy with our software and said, okay, it's time for us to go and raise money. Um, and the problem was that, well, you want to raise money, there are, there are many questions that come to mind. One of them is, okay, who do I raise money for, from and how much money do I raise and what's the valuation? And all this process, I'd say more than anything, it's doing for the first time, it's a, it's a huge, you know, just a lot, it's a learning process. So you have to figure out and to study and to kind of to learn all the terms and you know how, how it really works. And then you start meeting investors. And meeting investors is something that I can tell you by the time I met the tenth investor, my story and the company story was so much more fleshed out and so much more polished than you know the first investor I kind of didn't know what to tell them almost. Um, and the important thing to know that if you want to raise money, you are gonna hear a lot of time, no. And not because you're not cool, or you're not good, or your company's not good, and it's not gonna succeed, right? Just by the sheer fact that you have to uh, be in the right time, in the right place, with the right investor, with the right product. Some investors will, you know, just not, simply not invest in the type of company that you, you know, you build, but they'll meet you anyway, because they say, you know, maybe they wanna, you know, keep contact with this guy. Um, one example that I'd like to give to, to young entrepreneurs about that, um, people who work with me know that they really like uh, Starbucks, not the coffee, but the company. Uh, the company, not their coffee. 
uh, because I think they did remarkable things. But one of the things, you know, the founder of Starbucks, our tools, uh, he had to pitch 272 investors before he was able to raise money for Starbucks. One of the biggest companies in the United States today. And when he was asking for money, people were laughing. They told him, are you going to sell coffee for three dollars when you know people can buy it in McDonald's for twenty cents? You're crazy. But turns out he, you know, it's very hard to uh, um, uh, distinct a visionary person from a crazy one. Uh, so I guess they just didn't stay with him. Yeah. Um. Uh, okay, you you mentioned software quite a few times, and uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, what Future Simple does? I understand it's a customer uh, relationship management system, but I mean, there's like quite a few of them out there in the market. There are big ones, small ones, and uh, so what is it that you that you do? How are you different from them? And I don't know, maybe also who's your biggest competitor, or who you see as your biggest competitor? Yeah. So um, the way we think about ourselves is, you know, we, we have the notion of creating simple software for small businesses, um, and it started by the understanding that small there's 25 million small businesses in the United States, and today are using, and you asked about competitors, which is a really interesting definition, right? So, uh, paper is our competitor, pretty big one, and many people use paper to manage their data to start a business. Uh, and seriously, we do think about that in our messaging, we tell people, like, draw the papers, right? Uh, Excel is a competitor because people use Excel for many things, and definitely there are the software companies that, that are competitors. But, you know, I mentioned that in, in the talk, and we believe that by giving them better user experience that fits their needs rather than its database with forms, which is you know one of our biggest competitors, Salesforce is, right? Uh, we can uh, have a significant market share in this market, and, and most importantly, at least for, for me, for anything, have a huge impact on the small businesses who, who need our help. So, uh, can you tell us a little bit about the team? Because I understand it's a pretty big part of of any company, especially a startup, uh, how, how do you hire, what do you hire, or, you know, uh, what are the kind of things you need to think, think about when you, when you build a team and... Uh... Yeah. Uh, well, I cannot, cannot stress it enough. Um, <laughs> the team is, like, the number one factor that will take, you know, make you or break you. Uh, in, in my case, I'm, I'm really screwed. <laughs> Uh, but, but seriously, I think, I think what you want to do, and we tried to do that very early on, we said, okay, what are the type of people we want to work with? And we had this kind of, came up with this uh, notion of really seven values, but not the kind of type of values that you see in many huge corporation, foreign corporation, that they'll you know, print out and give you to take home or like put on the walls. We don't have them on the walls, we don't have them almost anywhere. But we know what they are. This is how we try to hire people and also to fire people. But I think that this, if there's one place you want to, don't want to compromise at, it's there. It's in building your team. And people compromise because it's very, very, very hard to find really great people. Um, but, you know, there, there is this idea that many people talk about that, in, especially in what we do, a great person is ten times better than a just okay person. Uh, so it's just worth it to work and, and find these kind of people. And I, and I think that for us, uh, this is huge and this is what drives our company and you know, without that, there's, there's nothing, not for any company. <laughs> so what do you think is the single most important characteristic of an entrepreneur? The single, the only, one and only. You, have, you get to use one, none. Not joking. <laughs> uh, perseverance. If only for me with this word, but if not, I'll tell you. But the idea that you, if you see, uh, if you look at early, you know, I, the example I get about Howard Schultz, right? Talking with 270 investors before getting the yes. Uh, if you see um, a video of Mark Zuckerberg really early on talking about that he's building like this small thing. You know that that you know is for colleges, right? If he even doesn't understand what he's building, um, it's ups and downs. It's a roller coaster, and you just need to stick to kind of what you believe, stick to your values, and kind of 
keep going. I think this is kind of the most important things for entrepreneurs and every entrepreneur that I think I met. Even ones, by the way, that you think that are super, super successful and everything happened for them, you know, within one night. I met once an entrepreneur who took me, who told me that it took him 15 years to become an overnight success. So, uh, you know, keep, keep that in mind. Okay, so, uh, okay, I'm probably going to What's your software stack and what makes you cry about this? Wow. <laughs> uh, <coughs> well, <laughs> I'll start with what makes you cry about it. Uh, yeah, so the, for now, nothing. Uh, now, keep in mind that I'm coming from a dot .NET world. <laughs> And coming from this world, everything we do today, um, you know, basically, um, is, it looks like beauty and agility, and you know, the, our ability to move so fast and to innovate and to do just cool stuff. You know, just today, this guy over there, uh, marching, joking, like new stuff that he's been working on, um, you know, just in JavaScript. But it's, it's kind of, for me, it's mind blowing because seven years ago. In my previous company, it took us a week to deploy it, right? I do that today in you know, seconds, or under a minute, right? But this is another thing that I want to tell entrepreneurs, which is critical, and that's software stack is important, but it's not what's going to make you break your business, given that you're not choosing that. But people are, people are kind of becoming really religious. It should be like Django or, or you know, or Ruby or, or Node, whatever, you know, whatever it means. Or, you know, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you choose the right tool uh, for, for your task. And, you know, what matters is that you know what you want to build. And matter, what matters most is that you solve a new problem. So, uh, the last question before we open up for... Uh, for the audience is, uh, I mean, the, as, as you saw, there was uh, quite a few people here that uh, are not working on their startups but are really thinking about them. They, they have an idea, they, they have an edge, but uh, I don't know, maybe they are afraid to make this first step. Uh, what would you tell them to, to think about or to, to do? Yeah. <laughs> the answer was here in the first row, but... Um, so, as I mentioned, I went to Chicago, I, I uh, went to a business school there. Uh, which is not kind of a very typical thing that you need to do for, for entrepreneurs, but there was a guy who came to the school in, in one year after me, and he asked me, you know, I want to become an entrepreneur, so I, I was thinking of taking this and these classes, right, and then going and working at McKinsey, which is a big consulting company, so I see like you know, different industries for four years. And then maybe doing some financial role in the company for three or four years to understand finance better, so I can become an entrepreneur. Um, and, and I thought about it for a while and thought, dude, there's only one way to become an entrepreneur, and it is to become an entrepreneur. Um, I, until you're not doing it, you just, you know, you, you won't know. So my answer to that would be just, you know, take a jump and, and do it, and, and you learn. And maybe you're good at it, and you know, many people who thought they're not good at it are really good at it. Many people who are sure that they're great at it, suck at it, and you won't know until you try. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Then? Okay. Okay, so there is a, it's a question. <laughs> it's, a, it's a serious question about some serious, serious data. Serious so you mentioned uh, you were, earlier when you were speaking about interfaces, uh, you mentioned that there are going to be. How do you say it? Right? And so the question is, and uh, it's a very yeah, it demands for a uh, for a very um, serious answer. Is when do you think there will be uh, real interfaces, computer? Computer, uh, computer and real interfaces in cars, and yeah, that's and like, when when do you think it will be like a mass market thing, and when in, people in cars, yeah. in cars. So I think that Ford is now releasing a very innovative interface in cars, and you can go online and, and kind of Google it and look what what they're doing. Um, you, you know, you're. 
we now went to San Francisco we can I had to rent a car there. I was amazed by the amount of technology that was in the car because I got a pretty simple car. Um, like in Chicago, but, you know, the technologies are there. So I think you can better self by and, and the experiments are there. So again this four four thing that they're doing. So I think you can better like a couple of years. And it depends what you're talking about. Like, you know you know you have these cars that already park themselves. You have like cars that you know, keep you on the road, and it's just the beginning. I don't know what they're like. Okay, do you have a question in English or a problem? I have a question for your business. You have said about user experience a lot. How you approach usability issues? Or what? How do you process uh, the Yeah, so, um, user experience is what I've done for many, many years. And, uh, I, I can say that six or seven years ago, the word was usability, right? And there was like this huge organization, I don't know if it's popular in the United States, in uh, Poland, uh, called the UPA, the Usability Professionals Association. Uh, anyway, I was a member of this you know, organization, and I went to a couple of events, and the events they were talking about a specific device when the user thinks about like his left ear, how it's gonna change, you know, just so specific, and then I figured out that usability is very important, uh, but it has to start with thinking about the user experience. And what we try to do is really try to think about how, how will people try to work with this interface. And only then, well, we can check for you know, usability issues in, you know, either use tools or the best way to see how your users are using it, which is kind of the best way. But the way the process works in, in our company is that we we'll usually try to design something, put it out there as fast as possible, so prototyping, because one of the biggest downfalls is that people you know, are creating too much documentation before they try to see it live. So we try to put it, uh, make it work as soon as possible, and then iterate on that, rather than plan for a long time and hope that it's the right thing. Do you have any more questions? Questions? Yeah, I guess that's, thank you, thanks a lot. Thank and was anyone inspired or was did anybody learn something new? Yeah. Yay! Yeah.